So let's go back to uh, that news here in France. French President Emmanuel Macron dissolving Parliament. Crucial question, or one of the crucial questions, is what are the papers saying about it? Leo McGuinn is joining us uh, now to look at exactly that, Leo. Yeah, that news rocking France last night, unsurprisingly, on the front page of every single French newspaper. I'll start with La Croix, who have the headline, The Earthquake of the Dissolution. The president says he wants to give the floor back to the French. The newspapers say that this outcome is not short-sighted, but places France on the brink of an abyss, given the national rally is approaching these elections from a position of stre strength. Aujourd'hui, en France, uh, call the announcement a clap of thunder. They describe it as a presidential game of poker being played by Macron. The more right-leaning newspaper Le Figaro is one of the few to not have Macron front and centre. Instead, they have Jordan Bardella, uh, the 28-year-old, leading the national rally to a historic result last night, winning a third, nearly a third of the vote on the back of a wave of support, as Le Figaro describe it. Let me try and show you the, the scale of the victory for the National Rally yesterday. This is in Le Mans this morning. This graphic, the brown, uh, shows how the different communes voted, the 35,000 different communes, all the dark brown is for the far right and the National Rally. You can see that Paris is really the only area that strayed away from the far right, as well as parts of the southeast. The left-leaning Libération, again, have Jordan Bardella on the front page, opposite uh, the President of the Republic, with the headline, The Extreme Gamble. According to Libé, the most likely consequence of this gamble is for Bardella to become Prime Minister before the start of the Olympic Games at the end of J July. The Maconian gamble is perhaps in order to prove that the national rally cannot solve France's problems. L'Humanité have a very similar headline to Libération, the crazy gamble. The paper calls for a leap of faith from the left. They finish with this, heads I win, tails Le Pen wins, Macron tells voters. Yeah, not just here in France, of course, that it's making headlines, right across the world, in fact, Leah. Yeah, the news sending shockwaves around France last night, but the world as well, as you say. And I'll start with The Telegraph in the, new, the UK. Have, they have this headline on the front page, Macron trounced in EU surge. Uh, they called the decision to call snap parliamentary elections a remarkable gamble. Looking inside the paper, they say that this roll of the dice is against Macron and history is against him. A French president has only dissolved parliament five times. The last time, Jacques Chirac in 1997, backfired spectacularly when he ended up with an opposition PM that he didn't want in charge. One analyst said that Macron is laying a trap for the national rally, saying that if Jordan Bardella was to become prime minister in cohabitation with Macron, that could cause internal divide between um, Bardella and Le Pen over who would run as president in 2027. Let's go to Germany and we can see Emmanuel Macron on the front page of Die Welt, which is one of the country's papers of record. Chancellor Olaf Scholz suffered a severe blow yesterday, his SPD party suffering their worst ever European election results. This actually heaps praise on Macron. Uh, Macron shows the greatness that Schultz lacks in his complacency, they say. They draw parallels between the two countries. France's President Emmanuel Macron has suffered a resounding electoral defeat. Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz has suffered a resounding electoral de defeat. One reacted promptly and put the future of his country in the hands of voters. Why not the other? I'll finish by showing you the view from across the pond. This is the New York Times. They say Macron was battered by the far right. His decision has ushered in a period of deep political uncertainty in France. If the national rally repeats its performance in national elections, the country could become nearly ungovernable with Macron confronting a parliament hostile to everything he believes in. And of course, the European elections, not just having an impact here in France, the far right making gains uh, across much of the rest of Europe as well, Leah. Yeah, I'll bring you through a few other papers across Europe briefly. This is El País, the Spanish newspaper, leading with the fact that pro-Europeans have retained their majority despite the tremors caused by the far right in France as well as Germany. Uh, they say the rise of extreme right wing, right wing and ultra-nationalist parties in Sunday's election not only consolidates their normalisation, but also threatens the very fabric of the European Union. Uh, Le Soir, which is a Belgian daily, have this. The far right strengthened, the traditional coalition saved. They say that in the end there has been no brown wave sweeping through European Parliament. The new Assembly will have at least 130 extremist MEPs. That's 18% of the hemicycle 
barely more than 2019. La Repubblica, the Italian newspaper, refers to an avalanche of right-wingers in the EU calling the right in France and Germany the locomotive of Europe. Yesterday, that train came to a halt, blocking the whole process of strengthening the union, writes the paper. They see the results of these European elections, elections as an expression of the insecurities, disorientation, anger and political solitude of its citizens. Summed up in the newspapers for us there. Thanks very much, Leo Lou McGuinn, with that for us here on France 24.